Hello everyone and welcome to episode 23 of the Sovereign Bannerman. I'm your host for today, Joe. I'm joined by regular host, Ben Davey. Hi guys. And guest host, Matt Edelman. Hello everyone. I see I've been upgraded to guest host instead of just guest. <laughs> I like this. Guest? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's a host when they're on. Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, 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 less special now. Everyone except for Darren, because yeah, I don't want, I don't want Darren, Darren to say he hosts this podcast. <laughs> 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 for no so other reason. <laughs> yeah. So it's been about how long? A month since the last episode? No. Uh, three weeks, is it? Three weeks, three weeks, apparently. apparently. Yeah. So, what have we been up to? Uh, did Nationals. Yes, Nationals. Um, I won lots of Netrunner alt arts by playing Game of Thrones. <laughs> Seems like an effective strategy. <laughs> well, um, we'll get on to it in a second, but they I had all the uh, alt arts bar cat, which they already sold out of. I, so I was like, I'm just fine, I'll get Netrunner ones then. <laughs> you know? Apparently some of the Netrunner ones I got are really expensive if you buy them on eBay. I didn't know. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, did you happen to score the um, the Spot Gloss Chaos Theory? I did. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, the that was um, its number is the number f- that corresponds to its uh, revised corset. I do. You know, position. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's uh, it's up to date. <laughs> um, that's pretty cool. But yeah, I don't guess what anyone else done. And, um, obviously, we had nationals. Obviously, Matt went off to that place up north from here. Is, is it north? It's, it felt east, east, east to um, to yeah. Sweden. It's northeast. Yeah, northeast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I attended Varberg Margulis. Yeah. yeah. I, I what should I say? Last year, I think had the best play mat. Yes, by far. The the where's the basically the uh, red wedding where's where's Waldo play mat. <laughs> Because that's, that's what it reminded me of. Um, that play mat was really cool. Yeah, was. the one this year was uh, had a nice. It was a nice, um, somewhat like little abstract illustration of um, the three eyed raven, and uh, it's really cool looking. I I did not bring one home unfortunately because spoilers. for reasons we haven't, got, we haven't got to the uh, the after action report yet. Got spoilers. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. Okay. Well. <laughs> consider that a teaser. <laughs> Did anyone bring home a play map? I can name a few. <laughs> I can, but we'll save that for the after action report. <laughs> so, I guess, Jay, what are we talking about today? So, pretty much what we're going to go further into what happened at Nationals for us, what happened at Warburg for Matt, his like interpretation of the European meta so far and how it's much better than the American one. I'm going to assume that's what he's going to say. I will but. leave you in suspense. <laughs> and we're also going to talk about Corpse Lake, hmm. a card we're pretty interested in. Yeah, nice. the upcoming Corpse Lake meta that's going to dominate um, that's going to dominate Stalic. Yeah. But we'll get on to that later. So, hmm. Matt, why don't you tell us about UK Nationals? Oh, me? Mm. Yes. Oh, sure. Only here. Uh, unless I've changed oh, my name sorry. without knowing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't hear you quite right. <laughs> so, uh, UK Nationals, uh, as I mentioned on the last in you know, the last episode, I was thinking Baratheon was the way to go. I was wrong, <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up I ended up going three and three. I think uh, those first, might those... disagree with you that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've been having some uh, some bad luck, and uh, I was it, this three and three was such an extreme three and three. I went zero and three. I went all the way Ow. into the jungle. You know, I sailed all the way in there. I I found Kurtz, and, you know, in the in the very middle, <laughs> and then uh, over the next three games, I I paddled my way back out. It was uh it was quite a ride, <laughs> but I stayed I stayed optimistic, and I I pulled through, and I and I made fifty percent. And uh, Baratheon was Barath- straight. Baratheon was like it, I don't think it was the correct choice. I think uh, Baratheon's in a bit of trouble right now. <laughs> what was it Barra Kings of Summit you went for? Yes, um, I was initially thinking I was thinking um, Baratheon Kraken to get into some location control. I was having a lot of trouble with it um, because I was finding that Baratheon Kraken was having trouble with either lots of locations or lots of attachments. You know, I could deal with 
I could deal with like the odd flea bottom here and there, but I couldn't deal with flea bottom and Heron Hall and Iron Throne, you know, et, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Similarly, yeah. I couldn't deal with Craven, Craven, Milk of the Poppy, <laughs> Milk of the Poppy, you know, that sort of thing. As, as, so, as Mr. Creston goes on overdrive. Yeah, as, as <laughs> Mr. Crescent, you know, he just can't he just can't move that fast. Um, yeah. So I swapped over to Brathing Kings of Summer because I was expecting kind of a grindy, Martell, you know, heavy, reset heavy meta that would um, take advantage of Flea Bottom. You know, lots of Varuses, watch, march to the wall to really get extra leverage out of that Flea Bottom. Um, my experience was that I was wrong. And I brought a slow grindy deck when I needed a rush a more rushy deck. And so I got sent into the jungle. <laughs> yeah, like, I just realizing, like, obviously we did a lot of deck discussion in the build-up, and Bear of Summon was not ever a consideration until the day before, was it? <laughs> That's correct. I uh, I was in the car on the way over there, and I started working on a Baratheon deck, and then I realized, you know, I mean, what's it, uh, a Begging Brother seems really good, you know, and I like Littlefinger, and... I want two little fingers for stability, and so ended up just doing Baratheon Summer just so I can jam in about 20 neutrals. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fat, I mean, well, you know, it seemed like a de- decent idea at the time. <laughs> did, did you at least go for the synergy and have uh, in the name of your king? Uh, I, could, I didn't have room. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's, just, the, that's the main reason I tend to run Summer, over Phil yeah, I just I just wanted more slots for because I tried to run three Begging Brothers, uh, two Little Fingers, uh, three Nightmares... You know, um, I also ran Rose Roads instead of Northern Encampments just for more stability, you know, because I was summer and I could do that. Um, by the yeah. way, Northern Encampment, I, I really don't like that card. Um, <laughs> I no. yeah, I've actually been beaten some bar- played some Barra players and beaten them because they're running that plot that that running that econ. Yeah, um, it's just too vulnerable to. Um, to the meta right now, um, Frozen Solid is very very big in this meta, thanks to uh, Flea Bottom. Um, Greyjoy is also really popular, and um, them ha- and also everybody has an Iron Throne. Well, maybe not everybody, but when you see Nights Watch playing Iron Throne yeah. and like Greyjoy Reigns of Krastomir playing Iron Throne, um, even Martell is playing two Iron Throne. It becomes very hard to consistently win dominance, and that location it's it's off or on. I think. Uh, it's off or on, so the, I decided to run Rose Roads instead. The um the the game rush I've, and I know I've told both you guys about before, but where I came back against the Braffian summer deck when I was mm-hmm. was it twelve two down or whatever it was, and he flipped into um uh, Feast for Crows. Part of my comeback was because I won Dom that turn, so he didn't win the game, and then mm-hmm. he had no econ the next turn, and then yep. the pressure I could put on because he had no econ just snowballed my comeback. Mm-hmm. Right. So it I I. It's a really good card when at the beginning of the game. It's a really good card when you're winning. It's a very bad card if you can't guarantee Dom every turn. Yeah, it's it's really it's great when things are going well. Um, I like how it enables you to uh, win dominance one turn. Maybe keep something knelt with uh, King Stannis. Maybe pluck a card out of their hand with um, seven gold Melisandre, and then next turn you flip into say Feast or Crows. Mm. You put down like a. A, bo- uh, a bestowed begging brother, and like you're protected against a lot of stuff at that point. So, yeah, yeah, it's great to give you lots of gold when things are going well. That's <laughs> the thing with Barra at the moment, though. Is like one, well, I think it needs to be Barra Phil to make more use of Acon, but Barra is very the snowball. The dominance is very snowbally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once it picks up, it just kind of takes full control, and there's nothing you can really do about it. So, but if it doesn't kick off at the start, then it's not gonna. Do its job. So I've been yeah. playing, since Nationals, I've been playing um, the bit of frames I have been playing. I, have, I was mostly playing a Barra, and mm-hmm. I, I agree. The games I was winning, I basically was winning from about turn one or two, and I just mm-hmm. I was just able to keep my uh, my foot on the, my foot on the throat. The games I was losing, I would get behind from turn one or turn two, and I had no real comeback ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I do that's, agree. that's my experience as well. It's just that um, Baratheon mm-hmm. is. It feels to me like the meta. Um, um, the common tools in the meta right now, such as especially Nightmares, um, Frozen Solid, uh, Sea Bitch, these are things that really um, disrupt um, Baratheon's game plan. Um, it Nightmares, Frozen Solid, Sea Bitch, they all disrupt the Red Keep, which is like the cornerstone of your typical Baratheon deck. Um, Nightmares is really devastating against Robert Baratheon um, because it affects your challenge strength, uh, unlike most other characters. 
You know, you go from being like, oh, I'm going in for power and uh, I'm doing a power challenge for about, you know, 15. I'm going to get you to block and then I'm going to intimidate your other guy. And then Nightmares comes by and now you're suddenly challenging for seven. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, Nightmares is very disruptive and a lot of decks are running two or three. Um, so that's Robert Baratheon. Um, yeah, Frozen Solid deals with the Red Keep. And uh, Begging Brother is really devastating against um, you know, the Melisandre-based strategy of like trying to get a kneel every turn in order to slow your opponent down. Um, and then, of course, you have a lot of people running their own Iron Thrones, and uh, and also that. And then you have you add on Frozen Solids and um, Lords for Shipwrights, and that disrupts the whole plan of um, Iron Throne with Painted Table to kind of grind out the opponent. It seems that the four pillars of Baratheon um, are just very disrupted. Um, with a lot of the cards that are common in this current meta, and uh, that's that's a problem for Baratheon. <laughs> and, and I think as we kind of talked about a bit before we started as well, with um, potentially Barrow having to completely change the game plan soon anyway because of the new plot. Yeah, it's uh, things are um, not looking so great for them. Um, I mean, uh, I don't know. You probably just drop Selmy down to a one of, and maybe get I, rid of, and maybe swap Stannis's. I don't know, but. I, don't, I, I worry for where Barrow is. Where Barrow is. Although, the, was it the cards that the White Walkers cha- YouTube channel spoiled? Mm-hmm. Um, they look. They seem pretty interesting. I like They're very average. Yeah, I, I, I said however, interesting, not good. <laughs> um, they do seem interesting. Um, I admit I don't really like the uh, the river boat boatsman, um, the three cost guy, very much because he's just another power and you know military icon. You know, then, and Baratheon has like 8,000 of those, and they just need something else. You know, like something with uh, something with like intrigue and power, or something with, um, you know, pa- another thing with power and intrigue, or a freaking Tricon. Finally, give him a freaking Tricon. They got you one, know, they got, got Renly. Yeah, exactly. Give him a freaking Tricon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like something, something different. Um, and then the, uh, yeah, it just seems kind of bland, and um, Baratheon's already way uh, over. Um, their three gold slot is way over jammed with fiery followers and a shy priestess and Solis and uh, Maester Crescent. And then you want to try to include, you know, some neat things like uh, what's it, the um, uh, fickle bannerman. You know, that guy seems to have a lot of potential, but you just can't stuff him in. No, he's he's <laughs> not he's not good. He's a win more card. Yeah, I hate, I hate using that phrase, but he is. Um, so, but uh, however, the event. I admit there is there are a couple of situations where I li- kind of like the event. I pref- it, like 99% of the time I'd say just run even handed justice instead because yep. it's more consistent. Yeah. How- however, I like the um, the natural synergy with a card that I've been starting to um, toy around with lately, and that's Light of the Lord. Um, so your opponent can hit Frozen Solid on your Iron Throne, but they can't freeze your Light of the Lord. <laughs> and it seems like it'll give. Like a card like Light of the Lord would give Baratheon a little extra edge towards winning dominance, and Light of the Lord gives you a gold in the dominance phase. Then that event costs a gold. So I, I'm thinking that now what you would want to do is oh, okay. you can gain, a, you gain a gold with um, with Light of the Lord. And then in the standing phase, you spend that gold to um, kneel one of your opponent's characters. Um, yeah, since it's going to go away anyway in taxation. Yeah, yeah that's fair. <laughs> So, Joe, what did you take at Nationals, and how was uh, your experience? So, after we like didn't tell anyone for a while because we thought it was funny after a while instead, we, like me, Joel, George, who was in uh, the Dutch Nationals, and Rebecca, all took Stark Watch, mm-hmm. which was our attempt at a medical, which I stand by to a certain extent. I, I think it actually wasn't a very bad meta call, considering the amount of Greyjoy that has been doing really well. Yeah. Um, I admit, I was... I I had it built, I had it with me, <laughs> and then it wasn't until about 11pm night of, you know, that well, I decided we, we to go We all knew you weren't going to play it. I, you spent I the know. whole week going, but what about if I play this, or what if I play Barra? <laughs> <laughs> I admit, I had it built. I had it built, <laughs> and I liked the deck. And uh, well, yeah. tell us how it did. So it was ba- heavily based off the DC deck, right? Mm-hmm. And we were just—it was one of the first things we tested, and it ended up being probably the best thing we tested overall. We had he- lots of begging brothers, all of the 
um, attachments or negative attachments and just a solid character base to defend a wall. But the problem was, it's like for me, is that there was we couldn't test every matchup mm-hmm. like, due to some scheduling. So there was a few that we weren't aware of. So that I got caught out in my second round in the game with Kevin with a Martel matchup that didn't go as well as I hoped and time got called just as I was maybe about to pull back in. I mean, it ended up uh, 13-12 to him. Mm. Right. And, and time got called as Dom was counted. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Like, I think, yeah, so he could have maybe swung round. But, okay. So, yeah, I lost. The, I was 1 1 at that point. Game after, I played uh, Night's Watch Mirror against Matt Herbman, who was complaining about his start in hand. I was so next to that got, one. That was funny. Yeah, hasn't got, so, hasn't got very good cards. So I don't know. He doesn't know he's going to win. He had three nightmares in his start in hand. And we both oh. had them all out. <laughs> yeah, he had three nightmares against me when I played him yeah. second round. You know, that, that's where my complaint about Robert Baratheon's being so disruptible comes from. <laughs> Yes. So every time. Oh, you've got like, another one! <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> yeah. So he got a six power lead on me over three turns because I couldn't hold a wall. Oh, <laughs> I didn't get any power out of it. And I, then I just did love became... that. To, oh, this is so bad. And it's just like, um, yeah, that, that's the opposite of bad in this, that's this situation. The best hand you could have. Yeah. That's situation. what it did to me. <laughs> Complaining about his hand. Oh, and Matt then... complains about everything. That's what Matt does. Okay. Okay. I see. I see now. <laughs> he's. he's He's called the King of Salt for a reason. Okay, okay. This is, uh, this, this, this so, yeah. is good. This is important. I'll remember so, yeah. this. <laughs> so I was one and two at that point, so it was going a bit downhill. And then, so then, I was starting getting the matchups that weren't as great. Oh, like, mm-hmm. So next up, it was against Sweeney, and he had, played, like, I thought it might go all right. But then he drew every single Lord and Lady, and I couldn't keep up with attachments, and I didn't see the wall. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's that seems... another thing as well. It's my ability to draw the wall all day. It was an absolute pain. Like, my yeah, first that's... game went to time like, because I did not draw the wall, even, but I drew all my attachments. Yeah, the deck seems to be very uh, focused on um, digging in and winning with the wall. So if yeah. it doesn't see the wall early enough, um, that could be a problem. Yeah, the, like, in the testing did... Never really had that issue. It, mm-hmm. The variance of it really got me on the day. Just yeah, I, I remember when I was, uh, you know, playing around with it. I had a few games where I had trouble finding the wall, and I ended up having to. One thing I really like about that deck is you can is the copy of um, Watchers on the Wall, John Snow, and the copy of um, Wolves of the North, Eddard Stark, just so you can yeah. power rush out. And uh, of course, Core and Half Hand is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, mean, I played against Rebecca, and we both we both had a miserable mirror match, which oh, was <laughs> oh, both kneeled the wall every turn, and who drew more cards to eventually win Dom. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, That's I'm going to put all my characters out that have no attachments, because I know exactly what you're playing. Yeah. And then that was pretty much it. <laughs> so you're sitting so, oh, there... We both, we both play no reset. Okay, I play my hand out. <laughs> oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> but like, so I went free for a real but the general thing that I think was string is we made a good meta call for the top tables. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we struggled to get to the top tables due to a bit <laughs> of bad luck at the start. Like it, we in testing we had good. It went well against Targaryen. It generally went well against Tyrell Reigns. We were happy with Greyjoy until we started learning the bit that weapons at the door was more popular than we initially expected. Okay. But that was still a fifty-fifty match, maybe. Mm-hmm. But just. I didn't. I didn't get those matchups. Joel was doing really well and got screwed by one mod win. Yeah, the, uh, guy. Uh, highest strength schedule in the tournament, I believe. And he did came twenty fifth on four two because he had that mod. And I, uh, I had the worst strength of schedule in the tournament. I finished yeah. above him because <laughs> I didn't have a mod win. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Um, however, uh, well. one member of our playtesting group that was um, that did well with it um, was it Dutch Nationals, uh, George. George got into the cut with it. He got the he got the matchups we were all hoping for, I believe. <laughs> so it went quite well. Yeah, I'll admit I had a similar um, I had a similar feeling when you know I was zero and three. I go up against Martel Fealty, and I and I'm sitting there thinking, 
Finally, the matchup I built my deck for. <laughs> yeah, like my, the last game I had was against Martel Crossing, and I was like, that was the deck going off beautifully, and I was like, oh great, it's, only, it's happened on the sixth game. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that seems to be the case. We, uh, you know, we both uh, with our Breathing Summer and our Stark Watch decks, we were calling, you know, we were we were building for a certain mat- type of match that didn't come true until the later, you know the later matches of the day yeah yeah Yeah. the meta was interesting they're a lot more targed than expected Mm -hmm. yeah i see i'm looking at the stats right now there was um out of 69 players uh it looks like uh 12 of them were playing targaryen uh 12 were playing greyjoy those were the two most popular um followed by uh, martel at nine that's uh it seems kind of unusual um, yeah. I mean, Greyjoy is, is, uh, being up there is not surprising, but um, I remember I was expecting a bit more like Night's Watch and Tyrell. Yeah, Tyrell was a lot lower than people expected. A lot lower. And only yeah. one made the cut, didn't it? Which was Whammer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So how about how about you, Ben? Well, I decided to take um, Targaryen Reigns because if nice. you're going to make Targaryen Reigns a thing, yes, um, you've got to do it at the biggest tournament in the UK. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, Ben, before you, uh, you know, before you uh, regale us in your, you know, story of Targaryen reigns, I will say you've made Dagmar Cleftjaw a thing. I wouldn't say it's just me. But... Well, I wouldn't say it was Ben. I wouldn't say it's <laughs> yeah, just you, me. You started. You, you were the origin of it. Don't, don't correct me here. You know, um, just asking, asking your, uh, okay. your ability to uh, create a meta. I, I, w- I would say R- Richard Walker has taken it to the next level by taking, um, having free in his nationals deck. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've only done that once, and that was because that was at uh, trial by combat because I was running it, and you know I thought I'd handicap myself a bit, um, <clears throat> other than just my general play. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, so I took Targaryen Reigns, and I don't think it was the worst choice. Um, I had a similar thing to Matt, where I went one and two in the first three games. Mm-hmm. The first game I made a bit of a cock up, so my opponent put down a Duke Danny. With two okay. bodyguards, oh. and I'm there like, right, okay, I need to clear this. I had, I had, um, what was it? I had um, uh, Crown of Golden Hand. Uh-huh. So, and he played trading. So rather than just playing it there and then, then flipping into Blood Dragon next turn and killing her before he could do anything. Oh yeah. In my head, I was, re- I was really worried yeah. that um, he'd have a way of getting it off her. I can't, I can't remember what I, was, I can't remember what my thinking process was at the moment. At that point. Mm-hmm. Oh no, he hadn't done trading, so he'd done uh, Late Summer Feast. So okay. he does an entry challenge. I have seven cards in hand. I draw another one, and the one card he took out of hand was the Crown of Gold. And I still mm-hmm. almost pulled it back, but he just, you know, I didn't see my Danny. He had Danny. That's kind okay. of in the target mirror. That's not a good combo. Oh, um, yes. Then I absolutely destroyed someone. Uh, completely screwed up in game three. Completely my own fault against Keb. And okay. uh, yeah, he he was complaining about my about my uh, jakarasing and getting resulty. And then I just, then I was, then I spent the second half of the game complaining about raiding longship, just screwing up my maths. <laughs> uh, and I let I let one too many challenges go and oppose and lost that, which made me mm-hmm. roll. But then after that, after we kind of went away, had some food. I came back and I, I was awake. I was on it. And the next three games, I think I, I, I think I was quite happy how I played. Mm-hmm. The um. The, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the deck. I still think it's a fun deck. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not quite sure it's quite there yet. Okay. I, um, I, I like the idea. Um, have any new cards come out to uh, really help push it forward? Not since... Um, what's his face? Not since Grey Worm, really. <laughs> Grey, oh, okay. And Grey Worm was this? the card where I went, this makes it possible. Oh, that makes sense, because he's effectively an 8-strength intrigue attacker. Yep. Yeah. Wheels within wheels is what makes Targaryens more. Oh, that, that's wheels. nice too. Yeah, that's helped. I did have that in the deck. That's quite nice, especially if we had to dump um, dump some of the dragon is no slaves into the bin and uh, mm-hmm. draw something else. Um, Flea Bottom and Second Sons was doing some serious work in most of the games. Mm-hmm. That is a brilliant combo. I mean, it's a bit too good. 
um, <laughs> is probably way too good, actually. Yeah, when uh, any time a, uh, a card's downside becomes an upside, <laughs> <Yep. that's, laughs> you, have to, you have to look at that. Oh, oh <laughs> it goes in the bin before it gets put at the bottom of the deck. Damn, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when until at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, they, that, that did some serious... There was a couple of games where that combo basically just get, just it just gave me such an advantage that my, it, was, it almost felt a bit unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I had fun. I went four and two in the end, and I said, just finish above Joel, which I did not deserve to, because I watched some of Joel's games. He was playing a lights out, and he deserved far better than 26. <laughs> but yeah, that's strength for schedule for you, and, and a mod win. Yeah. Well, fortunately, since we did a top 16, um, it meant that everyone who got... Five and one made it into the cut. Um, that part is nice. Um, we didn't have so we didn't have you know the nasty scenario that happens sometimes where people who go you know X and one you know don't quite make it in because the cut's too small. So I'm I'm really glad yeah, we did that. They, they, it was yeah. quite cool. They, they they although they almost couldn't because Justin Pavilion crashed just as I'm putting all the results in for the last round. <laughs> and uh, so they they were they were possibly have to go right guys the top eight are all five and one or better we know that mm-hmm. they're the top eight. Oh, because the way the math worked out yeah, yeah, yeah. but um because but they um fortunately got up and running before the end of the day okay uh well end of the before we all went home uh and also of course gabby was very unlucky and came 17th yep. yeah. yes the just getting girl. etched out by evan i uh, don't who, who's this evan guy yeah and, and and obviously the bit that made it worse for us you're saying on the car ride home is the fact that for some reason alex thought the top 18 made the cut so he was con- okay. he was congratulating her while everyone else was saying how sorry they were. <laughs> oh. Alex, Alex has a bad habit of just saying the wrong things. <laughs> it happens too much. He does. <laughs> it's bless him. Bless him. His heart was in the right place. Um, yeah. But yeah, the event was really cool. Though. Um, was it the, the the cut was really was uh, had some really good games in that I watched. Um, mm-hmm. Oh and... yes, and it was uh, it led up to that uh, that final <laughs> that epic final. Oh yeah. All right. So listeners, if you get a chance to uh, you know to find the video, I'm of... it, I'm going to post at some point. I'm, exactly. I'm a bit we need to do some commentary for that. By the we way, we do. Man. I do. I need yeah. to actually go and do some commentary for some uh, so, so many videos. Yeah. So when we put <laughs> up that, uh, so viewers, listeners, when we put up that uh, that final, that is a match to watch. <laughs> it it's great. It involves one of the probably one of the greatest th- comebacks in you know Throne Second Edition history. Um, yeah. It also involves. Uh, it, it also now has its own meme. The game is that famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some great moments, and uh, it's totally worth watching. Yeah, oh, cool. <laughs> and it shows. It really demonstrates why um, Evan is is like a really good player. I've, you know, since moving to Edinburgh, I've played against him a few times now, and he just manages to get his way. He just, you know, skill his way out of you know lots of really tough situations. And that's yeah. why he's the UK national champion. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me, that watching some of the things just remind me how, like, how much I love playing Targ, just the ability it has for those sort of comebacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah, Evans, great player and a great person to play against. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, he's he, yeah, he's fantastic to play against. Even when he, um, I was playing, I played him at Euros, and he was he was he was really apologetic because he basically well he says he he said he basically won because he crowned a gold of jewelry on turn one, uh, which left me with no saves. <laughs> um, uh, mm-hmm. But but he, but he was really nice, and we had a, we had a great chat. It was the first time I've, it was the first time I've ever really sat down and spoken to him, mm-hmm. and he was he's just such a lovely guy. Yeah, you know? I I quite like Darren, but if someone's gonna, if someone's going to take it down, I'm quite I was quite glad it was Evan. I, b- I believe what was said was Evan or Evan said that that's it's the most people who's ever backed him to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Evans also had a lot of pretty high profile um, cuts. Like he made, I think he was top eight in Stalic last year. Um, I think he got a couple of second like second place finishes. Like he was consistently near the you know, finishing near the top. He so it's great that he has a big win, you know, yeah. considering how far he's come. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure he made the cut of Euros. Yeah, the second cut, not the um, progressive one. Well, the progressive one, but yeah, but yeah, it was nationals. It was good. Um, it was, I don't know, it felt almost worth the travel up. The travel up was fine. The travel back that that then started yeah. to me realize quite yeah, how far it was. That was that hurt a lot. Um, 
But yeah, uh, but no, it was good. Um, I think I assume probably going to be Liverpool again next year. Yeah, I mean they pretty much said it is, um, okay. which is sort of a shame because I like it a bit more central. But uh, I probably I'll probably go again next year. Okay. So uh, one thing we could talk about is: Do we remember our predictions that we made last episode, Got and enough. how and how close were we? <laughs> we were all off on Tyrell. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we're all up on Tyrell. However, I will take credit for saying I predicted that a Greyjoy deck could go all the way, and I was correct. <laughs> Greyjoy didn't go all the way. Yeah, Tyrell yeah. went all the way. Oh, well, it was never. <laughs> and they played Night's Watch in the final. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, according to Evan, he did say that he wished he was playing Greyjoy Dragon because he just wanted more Greyjoy cards. <laughs> the Greyjoy cards did seem to be a big part of what was yeah. happening. Okay, Funny, it's, no. it's, like, it's like Greyjoy really good in the meta at the moment. That's the thing. This is a thing I heard. I'm just going to double check. Right. Confirmed by Darren's run as well. Apparently, the final was the first time Darren had run into any Greyjoy cards in Nationals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And with, with Corpse He's Lake, Greyjoy is going to be even better soon as well. Yeah. Yeah, that really accelerates a, um, a strategy that's been brewing in Greyjoy since mm-hmm. arguably the core set, but uh, has been seeing a little bit of love here and there. Um, and now with, now the corpse, like, I think is going to put it into, give it a little kick, you know, to really push it forward. And we'll see uh, we'll see uh, what kind of decks come out of it. Well, I'm, I'm already looking at bannering Greyjoy, but yeah, to Lion. Um, I, I could see that working. Um, you know, I don't know if it's fast enough. Yeah, uh, it'd be mm-hmm. fun. Use more options for sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, so Barberg. Yeah. Right. So the week after, man, I love the you know, the European throne scene. I went to two like high profile tournaments in yeah. two weeks, so and then I've got another is, one this weekend. This is your, amazing. It was yeah. your first road to Stalic event. Huh? It was my first road to Stalic event, and it was it was a lot of fun. Um, I highly recommend Varberg um, because of how. How nice everybody was. Everybody was so laid back. Um, the environment was very good. Um, the store um, that's run by a Thrones player, um, Samuel Lind, um, yeah. it it's very comfortable. Um, they have they have coffee that you could uh, get a nice little deal to have coffee all weekend. Pizza is constantly being ordered, um, and just everybody there was just so relaxed and laid back and it's you know part of it's the it's the environment the uh, the lighting is very relaxing the you know, the the you know high ceilings mean that the um it doesn't get too noisy in there so you can really just you know relax and the windows of the place um let in a lot of sunlight so it's not exactly you know the a very crammed hellhole you know it's just a very relaxing experience um so i i had a great time i went three and three again this time with Baratheon Kraken <laughs> because you know I just thought okay Baratheon Summer didn't work okay maybe I need to go back to something a little faster I brought Baratheon Kraken that was a mistake was that also for uh, location control that was for location control and I wanted to uh, push a um, a um, offensive valor strategy um, which actually worked pretty well uh, the problem I ran into is that damn Greyjoy Reigns is really good yep <laughs> yeah I like I I was going in there thinking that I was a um, like Greyjoy was a good matchup for me, and then oh my goodness, I was just getting like blown away by like how effective Greyjoy can be, especially after a reset. Um, Greyjoy Reigns' ability to um, play Val Magulis, save some of their characters, then you know push hard with you know do an intrigue challenge backed up by um, by Iron Fleet scouts just to flip out of of Valor Magulis. That's a lot of pressure. That's really hard to deal with. Yeah, um, and I think it's. I honestly think that Greyjoy Reigns is the uh, best deck in the meta right now, because simply because of its ability to just um, you know reset the board and immediately put pressure on the opponent. On top of being able to deal with the opponent's flea bottoms and you know other locations. Yeah, yeah it just answers everything. Yeah. It, yeah, it answers a lot of good stuff right now. Um, so I mean, I got to the point where I remember you know telling my friends at. Um, I, I was telling my friends at Varberg that wow, like I felt like my red keep was a liability because I had to win a power challenge every turn just to make sure my opponent wouldn't steal it with uh you know with the sea pitch and draw two cards. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I just felt so dominated by Creech Boy. Yeah, I, I, lo- I love seeing the red keep. That's when Dagmar starts uh, drooling. See? But... see, see, <laughs> see. Oh my gosh, it was awful. And um, yeah. The, 
that one, um, yeah, so I, I did have a really good time. I le- met a lot of interesting people. Um, I also have to say that um, I, have to, I have to really uh, thank um, Jakob for bringing um, a, his first edition draft cube. So I played very little first edition, and drafting first edition, not only first edition, but Highlander first edition, where it's like one copy of every card across like the whole draft cube, that was so much fun. <laughs> I was there were all these cards. I would just draft all these cards I'd never seen before, and I thought, man, that's good. <laughs> Shadows Ariane Martel. Oh man, you can. That, that's amazing. Oh, Shadows uh, Mira Reed. Oh, that's good. <laughs> wow, first edition Retaliation. That seems good. <laughs> like, that was so much fun. So well, it's good. Like um, Barberg was a great experience. Um, very nice and laid back, and everyone was having a good time. The live stream was top notch, and uh, yeah, even though I only went three three. Um, I still managed to have a really good time. Uh, that one tournament, when it came to meta wise, let me um, just let me pull up my stats on the tournament real fast here. Where did it go? Hold on a second. Just getting out the stats for just just when Matt's done done that on a site tangent have you seen how many copies of um L5R Patriot Games have ordered yeah i've heard it's a lot uh, there's 162 in the picture they posted so apparently their launch event is going to be for um like 48 people or so bloody hell that's crazy and I thought we'd. I thought Patriot we'd. The games is the hub. I, I, like yeah, so. yeah, I get that. I mean, I thought. I and I thought we'd done well by getting seventeen different players. <laughs> actually, well, that is pretty not bad. Actually, anyway. As far as I know, it sounds like they're going to be selling out the. Hopefully, selling out the forty-eight in Brown. So that's your forty-eight. Oh, co- copies of the forty-eight no, copies. copies. Right. Okay. Yeah. Forty-eight tickets. I'm like, man, that's really good. <laughs> okay. So, Matt, your so, stats. Yeah, I've got my stats page. So, of 49 participants at Varberg Regulus this year, um, the top house was um, Greyjoy at 9, uh, followed by Martell and Targaryen both at 8. Um, then then Tyrell at 7. So, it was actually a pretty um, pretty diverse field. Um, Greyjoy how many, was... How, how many Lanny? Because that's the one, that was the one thing with UK Nationals. Lanny was least represented at UK Nationals. Uh, yeah. Five yeah. Lannisters. Which is crazy. At, yeah, five Lannisters at Varberg. Least represented uh, was Baratheon with three. However, one of them was actually a Night's Watch deck. And <laughs> that angers me to no end. That, that, was, that, that was like me at Nationals. All these you know, Stark players are actually just playing a Night's Watch deck. It's just Yeah, they, uh, the yeah. same thing actually happened at U.S. Nationals. I ran yeah. the stats you know, because I was uh, running um, U.S. Nationals as the marshal. And it turns out that once you included False Banners, uh, Night's Watch was the number three most popular faction. And that was during, like, Targ Central. Yeah, mm. so Night's Watch is just... Because of false banners, like Night's Watch is just the statistics seem to underrepresent how popular it actually I, is. I still, yeah. I still think the wall should have been loyal. I think mm. it shouldn't give two power and give all your characters plus one strength. That's but fair. No, we'll talk about that when we do our restricted list special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So the story of Varberg was um, Granger and Reigns, very, very popular. Um, it was. It, there were six of the forty-nine were playing Greyjoy, Reigns of Castamere. Actually, uh, the cut was was uh, two Nights Watch, two Targaryens, uh, two Greyjoy Reigns, then a Tyrell, and actually another Nights Watch. You know, the Baratheon Nights Watch who had three Baratheon cards. So three Bra- what, the Red Keep. No, Chamber of the Painted Table. Huh? Yeah, he was really. He was, that guy was really trolling. You know, that's Baratheon. Three Baratheon cards, and it's, the, Baratheon and cards it's the most MP, it's the most negative play experience. One of the lot. Exactly. Oh, awesome. So, um, yeah. So the the cut for that one, it it uh, culminated in a very tense um, best of three match between Jakob Holtman and uh, you know the first Ranger himself, Tomas Albeck, Greyjoy Reigns versus Night's Watch Fealty. It went the full time, and the final game ended with um, it ended with time called with uh, Jakob at a left power and Tomas at ten. So, that you we were watching it live. The reality was, yeah, because. Jakob should have won it game two. <laughs> like we um, it's like it was a very good game, but there were mis- mistakes made which just lost him. Like just 
a power here and there. He was making the bad challenge. Like I think he did two bad challenge phases, which lost him some power overall, where he could have won. <laughs> just yeah. got it earlier. It was noted that like Tomas like barely let through any unopposed challenges like on the whole day. Like he's oh, yeah, just that's a what machine. Tomas does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he knows he knows how, he knows how to keep that wall up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was one point in the final when uh, we thought that Yaka was going to turn the tide when he uh, flipped a um, first snow of winter, which, by the way, was kind of you know interesting for Greyjoy, um, Reigns of Castamere, running first snow of winter. No, it's uh, a good choice. Yeah, it's a good choice. It worked out for him. Um, so he flips uh, first snow of winter and thinking, oh, everything's going to be great. And what does Tomas do? He summons up a duplicate of his Samuel Tarly, and then all of a sudden, nope, no one opposed this turn. <laughs> Yeah. Tomas is a machine. <laughs> does, does also remind me, while we're talking about Greyjoy, show us a, a big quick shout out to uh, obviously Rob St. John for taking down Canadian Nationals. Oh, yeah, he also did um, Greyjoy Reigns of Castamere, I believe. Yeah. And he also won in a best of three. Yeah, I I really think that Greyjoy Reigns of Castamere is the best deck right now. It's no, You know strong. what the true best deck is, though, which we really need to talk about, is the second place at Shekna. Czech, Czech nationals. nationals, which was Barra Alliance, I believe. Yeah, it was it's more because specifically Baratheon, Baratheon, Kraken, Dragon, which is a really weird combination. I've, I've not actually is, is it been posted up yet? I'm afraid it, no, but I'm pretty seen. sure I know what it is because yeah. like, I guess, but... the, Gabriel's deck at Stalic last year was um, Barra Dragon, so I'm pretty sure it's Barra Dragon with some Greyjoy cards added, which was what yeah. it looked like when I watched it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. It's just great. Is there a video up of it? Because you know, I can totally I see stream, how that so would work. But uh, that's amazing that this guy managed to uh, go all the way to second place. Um, in fact, that reminds me that the meta at Czech Nationals was what I was thinking was going to happen at UK Nationals, and that was a lot of Martel, a lot of grindy, you know, matches involving dueling Iron Thrones and like heavy resets. So Baratheon was a much better choice, you know, for Czech Nationals, and I think there were two Baratheons in the top four, so that makes total sense. <laughs> yep. The amount of, uh, you know, it's just different metas. <laughs> yep. And, and that's one of the big things sometimes, it's cool, it is getting that meta, meta right. It, it, that can make such a big difference to actually what deck you should take, um, which sounds like a really obvious statement now said out loud. Um, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? You know, you, if you can guess where the meta's going, like well, like like I was an example when Ryan went to Spain and he and he just looked at what everyone and he just looked at the previous biggest tournaments the last couple of months, saw what everyone was playing, and worked out Tyrell Tyrell Rush was the way to go. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a really big moment because that finally broke the. Uh, the oppressive, you know, wall, chamber of the painted table, Iron Throne. Yeah, because you, you just beat them before. That was you, going on at the time. You yeah. beat them before they had a chance to get set up. Yeah, just rush them out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. yeah. Okay, so, um, anything else to add about Varberg? Uh, Varberg was a great time. Um, I, I highly recommend going. Um, flights are much cheaper than you would think. Um like I think my flight from from Edinburgh was sixty five pounds there and back. Yeah, but that's because it's Scotland and has to give a reason people to go there. Yeah. 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 And and leave as well, you know. Oh, Scotland, you want to leave? Don't blame you. There you go. There's a there's a cheap plane there. Get out. Yeah, thank, thanks. Thanks a lot. It, it's the same as Wales. You only pay to get in. You don't pay to get out. Oh, yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so it's totally worth going. And then also, if uh, assuming the episode comes up by then, uh, this uh, Saturday is Siege of Winterfell in in Glasgow. Um, it's going to be great. I know that um, Tomas Albeck is going to be there, so taking on all comers, going for his third Rogue Distalic win, you know, this week. And Tomas, if you manage to hear this, please just play something besides Nice Watch Fealty. We're all going to love you if you yeah, do. Right, in yeah. fact, tell you what, team white this time. Tell so you what, play Nice Watch. Brotherhood without banners. Just, just do it. Just do it, Tomas. It's you such a bad it. agenda, though. If he does what I'd expect him to, he'll be playing Greyjoy because oh, no. he, apparently he was toying with it before Varberg. Then he saw the Night's Watch house card and was like, "I want that." <laughs> <laughs> I believe that was his main reason why he took Night's Watch for that one. Yeah, I can't let anybody else have a nice Night's Watch house card. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. He's yeah. the first ranger for a reason. That's why he's the first ranger. He has all yeah. the nice things. I, I, got, I do love. I do love how cursed this Scottish uh, Road to Stark is, and how much stuff's gone wrong for it. Like the fact it's now on the release weekend for the 
the new big <sighs> ACG. They, they've yeah. just tied it in. They've got Costas. <laughs> Costas will teach everyone how to play off either. <laughs> we... Weekend. Um, Siege of Winterfell is going to have on Sunday um, during the cut. There is going to be a single core um, Legend of the Five Rings side event. Right, so be, just 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 don't you know just kind of staring into the into the slide, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Scotland can't catch a break. Nice, <laughs> but okay. all of you should go anyway. No, because... it, should, it should be. Good. I, I was actually yeah, looking... an L five R weekend, sadly. Yeah, mm. I, I was looking at going, and then a couple other things got in the way, and then it came out five hour weekend, and I was like, yeah, no, I'll be right. I actually I looked as I actually looked there. as far as I priced up flights. Huh? Yeah, so, that's that's great. That's that's great, Ben. That's great. That's and, very and, nice. And, and yeah. then the, and then this guy from America moved there, and I went, oh god, no, I'm not going to go yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I, I hear the Americans <laughs> like their their meta is what what what's it quoted as competitively hollow or something? It's like toxic or something like that. Yeah, yeah it's just well, Lannister, isn't it? Just yeah, Lannister just, with three tiers of lease. Yeah, just three tiers of list Lannister. You know, that's that's kind of how it works. Yeah, just, cool. whatever the most oppressive deck is, you know, the Americans will play it. I mean, Americans they'll run like three copies of that, you know, seven gold Joffrey Baratheon that just you know makes target player hate the light, hate the world. You know. <laughs> yeah. So um, it helps. J- just quickly, because we're touching on there. Have you guys tried Brothers Brothers Without Bandage yet? Uh, yeah, a little bit. My experience is it's really bad. It's not I worth it. I have seen some interesting uh, decks so far revolving around Mance Raider, mm-hmm. uh, where Mance Raider getting insight and then standing up thanks to um, you know various effects to stand him up and getting him into multiple challenges. Um, that seems pretty strong. Uh, yeah. Putting it on um, using Brotherhood without banners on crow killers. Um, I've seen that a couple of times. That seems really good too. It's not meta breaking. It's not gonna be like winning anything major yet, but it's not bad in my opinion. Uh, are we Greyjoy and Night's Watch Wildlands are the two decks to play at the moment. So if if we're looking at this from a looking all the lining up all the agendas, what we think is the best one at the moment or the worst one? I'm gonna go the worst one possibly being Alliance, and this one is close to that. Uh, I think Alliance is a diff- is like a different game. You know, it's yeah. it's. I don't no, think no, it's I'm talking about comparable. like pa- power of le- power level. Because I'd say also like Reigns is probably by far the best agenda at the moment. I'd say bro- like Brotherhood maybe sits in the same sort of thing as Kings of Summer and Winter. In so terms of power so level. right in the middle. There's um, a couple of days. There's nothing. There's nothing with wrong it. with it. it. If you put it in your deck, it's gonna do something. Like, there's yeah, I'd say it's yeah. about. Level. There seem to be enough wildlings and other neutral characters out there to make um, Brotherhood Without Banners work. I mean, you're looking at an Ocean Road deck, which yeah. enables yeah. a few other neat cards to be put in there. Like, I can totally see, um, was it like Joe showed me that three copies of Littlefinger works great in a deck that's running Ocean Roads. You know? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, and so that's draw and extra gold there. Yeah. Um, yeah. When the Night's Watch box came out, I was trying the Night's Watch Wildlings then, and I guess this is probably better than the wind, winter agenda I was running. Yeah, it's, yeah that is it. basically what it makes. Like, yeah. yeah, the one I played so far was stuff like Frozen Shore, just going rail shirt, right? Intimidate, mm-hmm. go in, Frozen Shore, standing back up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or um, I mean, you've got Dala in yeah. there for some extra draw. You've She's got Mass so Raider. Mass Raider with Insight is pretty nice, and then oh, he provides right. Ambush, which means you can get even more draw with Dala. I, I, I didn't just use Mass Raider. You didn't. Okay. What's it? Okay. I just wish though it wasn't a at the beginning of the challenge phase action. I wish it was just okay. a, a an action in the you know because you know because because then I, then I would think it's a lot better because then it would remind me of stuff like um, Lord of Rings ride. Oh yes, you know and that ability mid challenge. Oh you're un, you're under defending this quick. Get the intimidating mm-hmm. or that kind of equivalent ability. I yeah, that would be quite it, strong. That would, being able to that would be on the very fly. strong. No. I, I don't think I don't think it would be game break. I don't think it would be that any any better than like Reigns at that point. Yeah, I could agree with that. I mean, Reigns has filthy accusations, and and it's, it's, Reigns has a limit of how many times you can do something. This is also true. This, but this has a limit. It has to be a neutral character. Yeah, but so you that would say stop it. Still do it every turn. You can go. Okay, well, this scenario is happening. Maybe. It kind of puts your your opponent would never fully be able to play around it. That's okay. 
That's fair. Well, uh, if anybody out there, any of our listeners, was a uh, playtester, you know, who tested Brotherhood without banners, uh, please, you know, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook or, you know, or or Gmail or you know, snail mail or by Messenger Raven, and you can tell us your thoughts about how breath, you know, Brotherhood without banners became. Uh, a, a reaction to beginning the um, be, beginning oh, the challenge phase. Oh, there, there, there are a couple of things that could stop. I was like Stark could, could stop if it was a challenge action because you got Cam Winterfell. But yeah, fair enough. But anyway, <laughs> then you probably can't stop it with Winterfell because you're probably running out of a, with winter plots anyway. So Winterfell doesn't work. But okay. Anyway, um, so corpse, the corpse lake. Yep. Yeah, the the corpse lake meta that is upon us. I, uh, I kind of like this card. So yeah. where is Corpse Slate from? So thank you very much to FFG, who sent us over some spoilers from the new Tyrell box. We have the Greyjoy uh, cards. And the Greyjoy is a... Uh, sorry, Greyjoy. And uh, Corpse Lake and Drown God's um, Disciple. Disciple. Apostle. Apostle, thank you. I knew I said that wrong as soon as I started saying it. I'll cover that one when it comes up. Thank you. Uh, are the two cards that basically got sent. So we'll, as we've mentioned Corpse Lake, um, I think we'll start with that one. Okay. So this is a two-cost Greyjoy uh, non-loyal location. It is unique. It has the Iron Islands trait, and it says Reaction. After a character is discarded from the opponent's deck, Corpse Lake gains one power. Limit three times per round. So, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it seems that um, so it seems that um, each faction is starting to get a, I'm guessing two cost um, location that gains extra power um, on the on the fa- on the uh, um, sorry on the location so for like doing like things that are small council yeah chamber. like honey wine yeah. um, you know now here here we have corpse lake. I mean, what are some others? Um, what's it? A small council chamber? Though that one's three cost. Yeah, yeah but it's a similar ability. Similar ability. So we seem to be getting a uh, a good cycle of you know of locations that um, are like are a lot like corpse lake. And this is now Greyjoy's turn. Yeah. Yep. But it's interesting, like because it is it's very much focused on one deck type. It is. You, you've got a bit. I mean, the fact it's non-loyal obviously means immediately the the first deck I kind of thought about in my head, which um, I'm probably going to be streaming at some point, was um, Lannister, Lannister okay. Kraken, yeah. just doubling down with Tywin because that ability to shut, shut, look at two. Oh, that, oh, I'm getting a power from this one. Or oh, I can trigger the mountains ability, or I can trigger whatever you know the mm-hmm. whatever the the, the uh, Greyjoy army silences crew. You know that type of stuff. But mm-hmm. being able to actually just sometimes go, you know what? I just want the power game. Like okay. this on the Clash of Kings turn. Yes, yeah, so it seems like a good way to um, to rush out with, uh, you know, thanks to pillage. Uh, one thing I do like about the Corpse Lake is that um, since each instance of pillage uh, happens individually, this means that you can have multiple power going on the Corpse Lake in one challenge. Yeah. Um, you can't really say that about, say, Small Council Chamber or the Honey Wine. No. No, they're, they're yeah. a very lot more restrictive. Although, obviously, this is restricted to the, the keyword, but again, if you're going to take Corpse Lake, you're building your deck around it. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. the the deck I thought it was going to do very well in, which I've now potentially learned that it doesn't due to wording, was I thought it was going to be very good in Night's Watch Kraken in using Queen's Crown. Uh, is that because they're placed in the scar pile? Or not? Yes, I believe uh, so. Right. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that, that would be bonkers. To, yeah, question some question whether there is any weird balance with that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. That would that would be crazy good if that worked in that deck. Huh. Um, yeah. yeah. So landing kraken is probably where it's going to be. Landing kraken again. Greyjoy. If Greyjoy gets a bit more pillage tech, obviously we've seen the new Asher. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. A couple more pillage cards. It might be worth just chucking in as a. Well, I'm doing it anyway. I might as well gain some power if I get lucky. Oh, and, yeah, you're playing um, any sort of pillage, yeah. largely pillage focused thing to put in. Well, and, on and, the other hand, though, Greyjoy reigns. Um, one of the reasons why it's very strong is because you're it's Crow's Eye and his pillage ability. Mm-hmm. Um, then you can add in. Um, so one uh, card that both Evan and Jakob are running at Varberg that seemed to be really good was raiding the Bay of Ice. Um, yeah. Because of its ability to deal with the wall, um, yeah. and what makes it really work is the fact that you add some pillage on top of it. So, if you've got, say, Blackwind's crew, you've got Silence's crew, you've got um, you're on Crow's Eye, 
um, you don't actually need that much pillage to um, have like a pretty effective side strategy of you know sending locations, you know, distru- yeah, dealing with locations and uh, you know sending them to the top of the deck and then pillaging them right off the top and stealing them with uh, your own crow's eye. You know, except that, that's pillaging a location or the character. Yeah, that is completely different to what this card actually does. <laughs> that that works. Oh, it's a character. Yes. I thought it was a card. No, no, <laughs> oh, it's a character. Oh, okay. It's no, no, the, it works. It, it works with roughly half your opponent's deck, just not yeah. the half that you're talking about. This is true. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Captain's daughter. Yeah, but a character Captain's daughter is a useful. Deck. Captain's daughter. That's a good one. Um, there you go. <laughs> But yeah, that's, I think the yeah, um, I think what grade you really need is like a cheap, a cheaper character um, with pillage, like in the two two cost kind of range. Two cost pillage. Yeah, yeah they've had Blackwind's crew since the core. Yeah, they're fighting with slots though. I think with the Silence's crew, and I think Silence's crew is just better. Yeah, well, Silence's crew fighting is... with slots. They're oh, they're fighting costs. with slots for um, what's it? The uh, um, drown Dis- um, disciple, the drown god. If you're, if you're running out of um, if you're running out of uh, range, yes. Yeah. I, I'm, Those guys are... I'm begging brothers now. Yes. <laughs> I, and obviously, if you're going down the flea bottom route, then um, salt wives and um, mm-hmm. wilding uh, wilding uh, scouts are in roughly the same cost bracket. Yeah. So, okay. so lot, I think I'm not, and they haven't got no attachments, have they? Uh, so I know that's not a massive one, but that's one of the things I really like about Silence's crew is when it gets up and running, the no attachments can be really, can be really powerful. No yeah. craven. Yeah, no craven, no icon removal. Well, except for Nymeria, but that's it. Those guys are truly fearless. <laughs> oh, I love those guys. That's one yeah, of my favorite cards. They're pretty good. They get up to strength pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I think I honestly think they're the second best pillar. Uh, well, probably third best besto card now. Okay. Be- behind the two locations, which are buff and re- minus strength. Okay. Um, Joe, do you want to take the character? The other card we have is Drone God's Apostle. It is a full gold character with intrigue power, non unique, non loyal. Three, Three strength. strength. Yep. It is Drown God and Ironborn. And reaction after you win dominance, kill Drown God's Apostle to put a non unique Greyjoy character with printing costs free or lower into play from your dead pile. So. so this is yeah. interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, at I'm the not moment, sure what to think of this. does nothing. <laughs> well, no, yeah. there, it so there are some things. That, yeah, Blackwind's career. Uh, no, Priest of the Drowned God. Um, there is the obviously there is the currently is it the which which one is it the two costs where if a character comes out of the dead pile gain a power. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so I see what they're going for with this. Um, I do admit I appreciate the fact that he's Ironborn, which means that he can come back to uh, with core Aaron Damfair. Yeah. Um, uh, I, and obviously you can bring Cora and Dampier back. Uh, nope, non-unique. Oh, non-unique. Oh, okay, That's probably enough. why. <laughs> yeah, probably a good point why. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good they're, they're pushing this Drown God tech. This doesn't make me want to play ground, got a Drown God tech yet. Mm-hmm. Um, per- personally, um, first of all, I find it really interesting that you. this is the first time I've seen a card where you, you self-kill it instead of sacrifice it. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, that's really interesting to me. Uh, one thing to note, uh, you know, rules note. I believe that if you save him, it will not. His reaction will fail to fire. Reaction. Yeah. Um, depends what you save him with. Because if you prevent the yeah. save, uh, if you, kill, sorry, you prevent the kill death. him to put the unique. So yeah, exactly. So you can't cost. exactly kill him. Use your iron mines and still get the. Uh, you know, I, still. I know. I know this would be a rubbish deck, but it would still work with Spears of the Merlin King, though, wouldn't it? Yes, it would work with something like that. Because because you're not saving them. Yeah, Yeah. it doesn't prevent the death. So um, one thing thing I do appreciate about this is that it's an intrigue icon at four cost, and Greyjoy doesn't have any of those right now. I'm I'm just glad it's not a power monocon. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just (laughs) glad it's not a power monocon. Yeah, so, I mean, giving Greyjoy more intrigue icons is always welcome. Um, yeah. Just to really give them more options for um, intrigue icons in their, you know, in their decks. So now they're going to have Euron Crow's Eye. Um, they're going to have Priest of the Drown uh, God. Priest of the Drown God. They're going to have Drown God's Apostle. They can have um, um, Big Wex Pike. Um, oh, and then uh, Esgrin. Esgrin, yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, I think just the fact that it's um, and it's intrigue power in Greyjoy at four cost is um, is welcome right there. I'm I'm not really sure how to make how to really leverage its ability. No. Um, no. Drown gods. Uh, they, I know there's that one card we talked about where they when they come out, but I don't think you're building your deck around that. Mm. Um, I have a feeling this could be a. Um, I have a feeling this could be a uh, one of those cards, you know, where it's kind of like laying the seeds for the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Drown God, um, Drown God cards have been you know trickling in over time, and uh, yeah. they all seem to have they seem to have a power intrigue theme, which um, is welcome or, or just, just for the selection. <laughs> yeah, or just power, but it's welcome to uh, to see Greyjoy getting intrigue cards. Yeah. I wish Baratheon would get intrigue cards, but that's a, another episode. I just wish Barrow would get some good cards that aren't, aren't wish... from the core set. <laughs> oh <my> gosh, <laughs> that's another episode. I, I, it's just one of it is come on, one of my running one of the running jokes. I can't remember who someone on Facebook whenever like the new pack comes out and someone's all about the Bar- Baratheon cards. They go, "Are they from the core set? No, then they're rubbish." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, my latest Baratheon experiments have involved. Course at Stannis. I they have or haven't. Yeah, they have. They've oh, evolved. Quick question: Stannis. What are you using this weekend? This weekend, I am looking at playing Tyrell Reigns of Castamere. <gasps> yeah, I I actually have had some good experience with it. I um I actually um before I really picked up Baratheon, um, back in the Corset days, I really tried. Um, I really enjoyed playing um Tyrell. I really liked Growing Strong. I really mm. liked um. You know, like Randall Tarley getting to stand in multiple times. Have you got I, the new uh, location in there? I am actually looking at running very few locations because yeah. I'm expecting my but, my my enemy number one to be Greyjoy. That location is bonkers. It can be really good, but I and it, do, it doesn't it doesn't work if they steal it, does it? Exactly. So that might be why I play <laughs> that one because it doesn't do anything if my opponent steals it. So I'm gonna yeah you know, I'm still working on my deck. And but I'm gonna try to go pretty slim on the uh, you know the non-limited locations because of Greyjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's but, uh, uh, that's that's fair, and yeah, and that's I, that's that's one of the other reasons I think. Like um, I talked about the Stark deck I've been playing from Alex's one. I think that's the other reason for the for the King's Roads in some ways because it means that people yeah. are running uh, political disaster it hurts you less. Obviously, mm-hmm. the, the counter my counterpoint in my head is yeah, but if Greyjoy is a thing, you're on Crow's eyes free of in every deck. I don't want to be giving him free roads, Kings roads for no, for nothing. Yeah, that um that one thing to learn from the UK Nationals was that the medal was wide open at the time because this was the first major tournament that involved that had you know the um the, flea the fifth pack. pack yeah the yeah. flea bottom pack. So it sounds like meta calls were going all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I, it really threw me. I could have really done with it not having that pack out, and I've been a lot more comfortable. But yeah. hey, but you know that's that's the that's the nature of the beast when it comes to an LCG. Yep, and now we're gonna have uh, another first major tournament with another new pack out. <laughs> this one seems to be a little bit less impactful so far. Um, the six pack Brotherhood Without Banners. You just put you just put one. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Barrack. Seven. Yeah, Barrack on every deck, don't you? That's it. Uh, nope, not every deck. <laughs> so every deck. I thought about. He's actually, good. thought about this. He in, is really um, good. So I thought about this in actually in uh, Tyrell Brains of Casimir, and it turns out that his reaction where he gets kiss tokens, it only works when he's marshaled. It is. The so other thing, the other thing to be more wary of is Targ eat him alive on a Blood of the Dragon turn if they have a nightmares. Oh, yeah, yes, he goes strength. He goes strength zero. He dies. Strength zero. He'll break the dead pile. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, yeah, he's good though. I do like him, and I think he's the card we need at the moment. That ability yes. just to have the built-in saves. Yes. And um, yes, he, there is a downside to a save, but it it means you know, fine. yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's it's kind of like how every Greyjoy Jack is running three copies of Victorian Greyjoy. Yeah. You know, partially because he has that save. Yeah. So um just the just the fact that you can have a neutral renowned character with a self save, like that, I think that's good for the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, also uh Jakob did a really good job thematically of designing this guy. You know, yeah, he no, it's, it's he's, a great I think I think it's one of my favorite cards they've done recently. It's uh, I think theme theme wise it works, game wise it works. And when when you can get a card that does both, mm-hmm. I'm always happy. Yeah, it's uh, it's very well designed, and I'm uh, I'm very glad that um, he seems to also synergize well with uh, the Brotherhood Without Banners agenda. Yeah. And uh, it's my understanding that we're going to be seeing more Brotherhood Without Banners cards. Uh, they were talked about, in, I think, Pack Two of the next cycle. Yeah, I know we're getting um, Thoros of Mir in Pack Two. Uh, I think there's a second one in there as well. I think it was mentioned oh, in the good. article. I can't remember. I, I've just been a while. Yeah, but um, 
I'm glad that they're. It seems that they're bridging into um, Cycle Four with this um, latest pack. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. it's one of the things they talked about. I can't, the designer talked about when he was on. I want to say the White yes, Box podcast. Yes, that's right. And he said that they're going to do two two cycle blocks where they'll mm-hmm. have similar themes because then they rotate at the same time. Yes. And you okay. know, and it means you've got 240 cards to work on themes rather than 120. Right, and um, I actually like the idea of the um, the t- these blocks, you mm. know, to borrow a phrase from Magic, that um, that kind of you know are self-contained. So it seems like where the first block might be fo- focused on a lot of, say, like a lot of murder, you know, a lot of you know with Sir Gregor and yeah. Crown of Gold and Gulas, Miri, you know, and then it also added like you know the choke elements of uh, you know Kings of Winter and uh, White Tree, you know. Whereas this second block they were in the middle of, it seems to be defined by lots of gold, you yeah. know, and bestow. Yeah, yeah I'm, so, still, I'm still not sure. I'm, I'm coming around to bestow, but I'm still not sure about bestow. Um, I don't think that I don't think that plot's particularly great. Uh, I'm not sure about the event. I think uh, personally, I would recommend just uh, hold your judgment on that plot until um, you know, until you know we see Bestow gone wild. Oh no no I, I, no, I'm very, I'm very much I'm so I'm talking about Bestow at the moment. My my feelings oh. on Bestow have got better as the cycle's mm-hmm. gone on, but I still don't think that plot's great at the moment. I don't think there's enough. But to, to, I think for that plot to be worthwhile, you need to have about six different Bestow cards in your deck. Yeah. Okay. Um, and because you know the worst thing you have is to go right okay we're on plot seven I've got no bestow cards to play out I'm oh. gonna jump in ever so quickly and now I'm playing a I'm playing a deck at the moment which uses that plot I only use it for like to play out one card and it wins me the game every single time and it's my favorite thing right now but what happens if you don't see that card oh I always see the card you always see the, okay, okay and if okay, I don't fine, I just fine. wait till next time <laughs> that is one thing to note about this plot is that stats are pretty decent. What's it? Five stats gold, bad. four initiative. Like that's not bad. The stats are bad. And now that you've got begging brothers being neutral, mm-hmm. I think that helps. Um, you know, and you so you take for instance, and yeah, you know, and just get a free bestow. So mm-hmm. we talk about like science's crew. I love science's crew because you don't have to bestow them. Mm-hmm. They get bestow for just doing what they do, mm-hmm. and yeah. but that ability to gain their bestow for nothing—that's pretty good. But I still, yeah, think, I think, I still think maybe in a. Maybe at the end of the next cycle, when there's you can, each faction has about four bestow cards that are really good, and there's a couple of neutral bestow cards, I then think it that plot will become very good. I think so right I think now it's fine. Like the yeah. the best thing with it is it's got good stats. It doesn't matter if you flip it and it doesn't do anything. You still get in your gold. If like obviously you're putting it in to do something, but if yeah. it doesn't, then that's fine. Yeah. It's definitely cards that only get better as more packs come out for the next cycle. Because it's going more yes. targets. Yeah, you know. Here's to um, hoping that uh, Thoros of Mir has a is Baratheon and has a really sweet bestow ability. <laughs> I think. You no, know, I'm going to say that with I'm every. Sorry, pack. Matt, Here's yeah. hoping that Baratheon gets a good card. <laughs> I say every fact. Here's hoping that Sir Gregor Clegane is a Baratheon character. <laughs> really good stats. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and, and, and let's face it, he is super nil because the character's dead. He can't stand up. <laughs> he kneels permanently yeah. exactly permanent is better than temporary now <laughs> uh, but, but so. I, 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 I need to play more of the new pack I've not played much unfortunately with, with the new pack and I've kind of got my one eye on the Tyrell box because I want to do some night stuff with the knights and stuff with gotcha. um, corpse corpse so, lake so oh, just to say me, sorry guys um, with, the, with the spoilers sorry guys uh, just to say that they will be on the Facebook page the day after this goes out okay to say people couldn't see the cards and see the lovely art because I do I really like the art and the cards. It isn't bad actually. It's, no. uh, it's pretty good. The course looks so, pretty, pretty dire, as in it's pretty bleak looking. <laughs> but so, then what do you get uh, so from Joe, the name of it? If you were to, um, if you were to um, have a sudden change of heart about Legend of the Five Rings and attend the Siege of Winterfell on Saturday, which deck would you bring? Uh, God, uh, Greyjoy Reigns probably because anything else I've got at the moment is jank for UKTC. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're looking ahead, are you? What about you, Ben? If you were to attend, um, what would you bring? Well, I don't want to give the same answer, <laughs> so I'll quickly think of something. Um, I, I don't know. I think I'm probably. I, I might just go something Night's Watch based because I've kind of come to the conclusion that Night's Watch always do well at tournaments. Yes. 
And and if I'm going to a tournament, you know, I, I, when I'm building a deck, I always have two kind of minds where I'm like, am I building this deck to be good but fun, or am I building this deck to be competitive? Mm-hmm. And if, if I'm building this deck to be competitive, I don't necessarily care. I do care a little bit, but I don't care if it's that much fun. I might. I know it's probably the worst of the Night's Watch decks, but I can't. I always end up looking at Night's Watch reigns because mm-hmm. I find it fun, more fun to use than Night's Watch fealty. Okay. Yeah, it's it's more dynamic. You yeah. actually are making challenges, and, uh, and you can actually. I like how you can really make use of the fire that burns. Yeah, the fire that burns. Oh, fire burns is bonkers in that yeah. deck. But yeah. you know, there's also stuff like you can go aggressive. Like I think there's a few times where I've gone right. I'm going to go first, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to flip into go uh, Game of Thrones or Red Wedding or Red Wedding. Uh, not me. <laughs> yeah, or Red Wedding. Uh, but game. But you just go. I'm going to flip into Game of Thrones. You now can't do any challenges because Jon Snow is going to stand after after this. And you physically can't win an injury challenge. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and that the can seem quite negative in some respects. Uh, negative play experience. At the same time, it's just that ability just to have the complete control to shut your opponent completely down is really good. Uh, yeah, I'm um, I'm a fan of... Um, yeah, I, think, I think that's probably the deck I would take. If it was, it was being really serious and thought I'd have some sort of chance, I might have to go Night Switch Fealty. Yeah, Tomas's uh, you know Tomas's uh, innovations have been quite effective. He runs uh, two heads on spikes now, and it's brutal. Well, that's what Darren was running at nationals, and it did. did, did Darren well. was running Tomas's deck. Yeah, it was one of his one of his decks. Yeah, one, was, yeah, it, Tomas, it wasn't his, He was never it, was, has one deck, does he? <laughs> no, was it, did he end up taking that one to Varberg? Yeah, he had two okay. heads on spikes in his Varberg because, deck. Because last time I heard, he wasn't one hundred percent sure that was the right option. But that, but he said, "Here's my decks." He gave them to Darren, and Darren very skillfully took one, and I think, yeah, showed it was pretty good. But anyway, I think we better round off there, guys. So, Matt, thank you very much for coming on. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Joe. If you're still listening, thank you very much <laughs> yeah. for coming on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, guys, you can uh, follow us on Facebook at uh, the Sutherland Bannerman. You can. Download this podcast off iTunes or go to SoundCloud. Uh, any of these, please do like and subscribe if you can. Or you can listen to it on the Night of Black Quarter YouTube channel. As always, guys, it has been emotional. <laughs> <laughs>